Hey everybody, OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy here. Um, I am back now with installment number four uh, on the anatomy of a DAC. Okay, now we are looking at a $10,000 DAC and this is the Meitner MA3. Okay, so this is made in Canada, designed and made in Canada. And now we are departing from what we saw before um, and we are entering into a much higher level of design, okay? First things first, okay, this is the lid that, that goes on here, that slid on. The first thing I did when I got this piece was I tapped it, and listen, you hear that? There is no patang, tang, there's no noise on this whatsoever. That means to me they damped it, so I thought, well, they've damped it on the inner lid, Okay, but what I found in there was much more impressive. Not only is this damped, but look at this. This is one giant ground plane. Okay, so this here will absorb any emissions that come out of the inside here. It will be soaked up in here and, and, and turned into heat. Or I don't exactly know if that's how it works. I think it, it, that that's how it works. It makes the most amount of sense to me. But the bottom line is this prevents noise. This soaks up what's emitting from this switching mode power supply from any of the chips here. It gets soaked up. This is badass, okay? You don't see this in Chinese crap, okay? This is innovation. This is top level RF design, okay? This is what you see like in microwave towers and crap like that, okay? Like high level design. Here we have the back we look here we've got it's it's again it's a very simple layout very elegant for us to see what's going on again we have the front panel display we've got the power supply the complete power supply in a module this is what you're looking at here is the latest technology of power supply uh, this is the cutting edge of power supply technology it's got the whole thing completely encapsulated in here. It's got a Faraday shield around it to help um, emissions, to cut on, on the emissions, along with what's on the inside lid to uh, also kill that. Um, we've got a heat sink right here that holds it down. And then we've come over here and we've got the DAC board, the analog board, and the digital in the input section. Okay, so again, very simple parts uh, 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 to, to determine what's going on. So we look here, we've got a very nice digital input section. Right here is for the USB input. Um, we have the, uh, the um, a, uh, FPGA here. We've got clocks now. You know, there's a clock here, there's a clock here. There's a clock there. There is a clock here. So um, I want to point out that, and then there's a clock up on the front panel you'll see for here so there are many clocks inside a DAC um, and I'll get into that a little bit later as we as we look at more of these designs but I just wanted to point out to you there are many different clocks one two three four five there's six and maybe a seventh um, so you understand there's many clocks inside here and one of them is the master clock for the DAC so anyways, we have our input section here, as I was saying. Here, this comes across, this is the digital input. This is the XMOS, which is, is over here, um, that comes in, and that's how we program from the HD, or the, um, the USB input. We've got the media stick that goes right here, a toss link, um, and a network that we can plug in. This is, okay, so this is the network card. This is uh, so that we have, we have a streamer. This is the streamer, okay? This is all that's needed for a streamer. So you see these giant $17,000, $20,000, $30,000 streamers? This whole thing right here is the streamer. That's it, this board, okay? So to make it kind of stra uh, giant and extravagant, all this thing does is spits out a digital bit stream of music, okay? So to make something super big and extravagant, to spit out a bit stream of music, which is like the easiest thing. You can, you can do it on a board like this. It's extremely easy. You do it with a Raspberry Pi. So the question is, with the streamers, 
do you need more than just this? Um, I love it when it's on the board, when it's inside the DAC like this, because the streamer has no power supply cables, no USB cord. There's no, there's no cables. It's a chip that plugs right, uh, this is a board that plugs right down as a mezzanine, right into a socket. So it makes everything very tidy, and you don't have to worry about things, noise coming onto the cables and all the inherent crap that comes along with cables. You saw my video about the Constellation amp that had all these wires running everywhere and they didn't even have them zip tied. Now here is an example of a company that gives a shit, okay? That actually is making things tidy and nice. They put a nice wrap around these wires. These wires don't need this wrap on there. It doesn't do anything other than to hold them together and make it look nice and pretty. They put them under a nice uh, holding you know, strap, if you will, that's screwed down so it keeps them nice and in place. Um, they, you know, it's very tidy. If you look over here at the front, you can see how they took this ribbon cable, they bent it at a 90, and then they put it back and forth, and then put it over here to make everything nice and clean and tidy, and then they pressed it in there. They didn't just leave the thing, like out here, stringing around. They tucked it in there very nice. So this is... A company that cares about assembly you can see how it's assembled okay anytime you see these white things they may look like they're nothing much but these are the ones that measure the best and do the best job of transferring digital information inside uh, equipment I've seen them only in the best equipment and 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 in some others too and sometimes you blow it off and go oh it just looks like because it looks like so thin and it's it is thin, but these are extremely high performance. These are the latest um, cables that you use inside a piece of electronics to connect the boards together. So we've got our digital input here. We've got the streamer here. As you can see, we've got the digital board here. This is the digital board. And so we come from the input over to the digital board, which does all the DSP and everything and clocking and all that. And it sends a signal over to here where we've got a left DAC and a right DAC, and then the master clock. So you can see it's a pretty elaborate setup. We've got um, conversion happening here, conversion happening here, and then we've got the clock, the clocks, both of these, and they're all encased in small uh, um, Faraday shields. So this, they're all shielded from any um, type of uh, uh, emission that may come from the power supply or just may be anywhere, these are shielded and they're shielded to a ground plane. So anything that hits here is goes shunted to ground and it goes away from the delicate electronics that are inside. As we move forward, it's not op amps. It's a class A output buffer stage, I can see. And they've got that on the output there. And it's a pretty elaborate design. It's all surface mount technology. This that you're looking at here is high level DAC design, okay? Um, it does not look like much. You say, oh, they're just a couple small boards. It looks like China, same stuff from China, but they could not be more different, okay? Just because they look alike in a DAC, this is loaded with much more technology than some silly little DAC that has good specs, quote unquote, for $800 or whatever you see that you're trying to save your pennies on. Um, you get what you pay for in DAC design, and, it, and, and the result is sonic quality, okay? This is much more of a musical DAC. It is not harsh. You're not going to get any edginess. So wanted to bring you this and show you the architecture of a $10,000 DAC. Okay, see you.